Today I want to talk about thankfulness. What should we be thankful for? We're going to continue our study in the book of Colossians chapter 1. I'm going to look at verses 3 to 6 to give us some insight. Now generally the Apostle Paul really wants us to be thankful people. In the book that precedes Colossians, Philippians, there's this famous verse in chapter 4. It goes like this. Do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. It's a general feeling of thanksgiving that is especially seen in prayer. But here in the book of Colossians, Paul is going to hone in on something a little bit more specific to be thankful for. And I think it's going to really encourage us as we live our lives for Jesus Christ. I'm going to read chapter 1, verse 3, and I think I'm going to end verse 6. It goes like this. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, for this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Now what is this passage talking about? I wanted to focus this uh, mini-sermon series on Colossians 1 because it's a great chapter. This particular part talks about how the Apostle Paul is not thankful for the situations that uh, he is ba receiving in himself, like, you know, a raise or, you know, a new relationship, new clothes, a new home. What he is thankful for is how the believers in this city are growing in Christ. He gives thanks for their faith, the basis of their reconciliation and their peace with God. He gives thanks for their love for all the saints. He gives thanks for the hope that they have in Christ stored up for them. And then he gives thanks for their understanding of the grace and truth. It's a whole package about the spiritual life. It's more than like I said the sinner's prayer and, you know, now I have eternal life. He's not talking about that though it is included in that. He is talking about the whole package of why we believe and what we are to do. It is clear. First, we need to be thankful for our spiritual journey and the spiritual journey of others when they exhibit true spiritual growth, just like the Apostle Paul. Stop just being thankful for things about yourself. I got to remind myself about that all the time. Because I think by default nature, I just give thanks for things that happen to me. We need to begin to be thankful for things that happen to other people in their journey for Christ. Second, it teaches us that we need to be increasingly loving to all the people that we meet. In this passage, to all the saints, but I think the Apostle Paul is talking beyond that, though with specific emphasis to other believers. <clears throat> I'm learning that all the time. Because I think it's also our default nature to be a little inward, you know? To be a little self-centered. I think in a sense we're all sort of a little narcissistic. This is what the Apostle Paul is telling us. We need to be mindful to show love to other people. That is, maybe that's what we need to do as a result of this mini-sermon. Third, he talks about the hope that we have. It is grounded not in the present, it is grounded in terms of an understanding of the future. Maybe that's what we need, especially with this COVID shut-in, and it seems like, you know, it's going to drag on in 2021 for an indefinite period of time, and you're feeling all sorts of <clears throat> material, emotional, spiritual effects, you know? It's a good time to reclaim our hope that is in the world to come through Jesus Christ. And finally, the Apostle Paul talks about giving thanks for their understanding of grace in truth. That in the end of the day, all of our journey, all of our worship of God, all that we do for Jesus Christ is based upon a grace. It's based upon a <clears throat> kindness of God, his benevolence to us, <clears throat> something we do not deserve. And you know what? That final piece really begins to transform me. 
For then you look at things in life and things when they go well, you give thanks. But how about when they don't go well? You know what? The Apostle Paul tells us we understand all life is a grace and truth. Maybe you have to begin to reflect upon that. What is God speaking to you today? I believe there's something in this message, in these few verses, that the Spirit is speaking to you.